Welcome back to this short series of videos as we look at the building blocks of the church as illustrated in the stories of the risen Jesus and his disciples between Easter and Pentecost. And so far we've identified five building blocks. We've looked at dependence upon Jesus. We've looked at the importance of forgiveness. We've looked at the importance of tuning in to God's timing. We've looked at humility in the roles that God assigns to each one of us. And we've looked at the importance of faith and growing discipleship. And today we come to look at maybe the most vital building block of all, the importance of prayer. So listen to these verses as Luke writes to us in Acts. Then they returned to Jerusalem, from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And so after Jesus had ascended, we're told the disciples returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk, about half a mile to three quarters of a mile. And they returned, it says, to the upper room where they were staying. Now, is this upper room the same room that they had the Last Supper in? Is it the same house that we know from Acts chapter 12 that Mary, the mother of John Mark, made available to the disciples? Is it the same room where after the resurrection, when the doors were locked, Jesus appeared in their midst? We don't know the answer to that question, but what we do know is that they joined together constantly in prayer. The temptation is to ask what were they praying about? But we only need to know two things. First of all that they were praising God. Luke tells us that at the end of his gospel as he's given another very short account of the ascension. He says that they returned and they were constantly in the temple praising God. They got a completely new perspective on God. They were praising him for the resurrection, for bringing Jesus back to them. They were praising him for the ascension, for Jesus being exalted up into heaven. They were praising God because all those words that Jesus had spoken were true. Now they knew something of God's nature. They could praise him even more. And maybe they were praising him for all that was yet to come in anticipation. But we're told they were praising God. But also there was the unknown up ahead. We can be pretty sure, as they've been told to wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit, that that had to do with their prayer. But quite what will depend on what was in their minds and... I think we can be pretty sure that they were totally uncertain of what lay ahead. Jesus had said to them, when the gift of the Spirit comes, you will receive power to be my witnesses throughout the world. Jesus had said that when I go to the Father, i.e. at this same time, you will be able to do greater things even than I have done. That's a lot to get your head round isn't it? As to quite what it will mean for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. All they can really do is just hold their hands up to God and say, God, I'm open to your will. When the Spirit comes, let the Spirit lead me in whatever way the Spirit will. And may I be a humble and a willing servant. That's all they can do. And that's all really, that we should be doing as a church. Of course, we should be praying constantly for the Holy Spirit to come, 
to build on those foundations that have been laid at the cornerstone of, uh, of Jesus, but to build us up as the church, to come with power. But so often we come with our shopping lists, we give them to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, this is what we would like you to do. We try and conform the Holy Spirit to our way of thinking. When really in our prayer we should be actually looking for ourselves to be conformed to the Holy Spirit's way of thinking. We're told that they prayed, but we're told that they joined together in prayer. Yes, they were together in the same place, as we said earlier on, we don't know exactly where that place was. But the verb that Luke uses is, is so much more than a physical joining together. It's like when we might talk about being joined together in our thinking, that we were in the same place, we were on the same page. Jesus is saying they were united in their thinking, they were of one mind. And that mind was to glorify God, we've already seen that with the praising God in the temple. And the way that Luke tells this story, I'm sure there is a parallel with the Tower of Babel story in, in Genesis. Because there the people are united, humans are united in saying, let's build this tower and let's bring glory to ourselves. And in that story, God is portrayed as acting to scatter them and to divide them by their language so they can't communicate easily with one another. And now in this story, as the disciples are of one mind, as they're united together to bring glory not to themselves, but to bring glory to God. So symbolically on the day of Pentecost, what happens is the Holy Spirit comes upon the disciples. So we're told that everybody, regardless of their language, could hear the message that the disciples were speaking. They joined together in prayer and they prayed constantly. Now this isn't to suggest some sort of 24-7 prayer room, it's not a case of, well Peter you have the nine o'clock slot, Bartholomew you have the two o'clock in the morning slot, oh no, I'm always in the morning. No, it's not like that. It's not intended to suggest a praying every minute of the day but that this desire to see the Holy Spirit come, to see God glorified in the world, was their constant desire. It was their number one priority. It was their heart's desire. That's what it means when it says that they prayed constantly. And so it should be for us. That desire to come and to see God's Holy Spirit move. You might say, well, they were praying for that to happen and it happened a few days later, so do we need to pray for that as well? Of course we do. We always need to pray for the Holy Spirit to come and take us where we've not been before, where God is leading us, to build up the church in power that it may bring glory to God's name, to build upon those building blocks, those foundations, that cornerstone of Christ that are already in place and if they're not in place for the Holy Spirit to lay the foundations as well. But we need to pray, come Holy Spirit, come. Constantly. When we're waking and when we're sleeping. When we're working and when we're playing. When we're cooking and when we are eating. When we are doing this and when we're doing that and I could come out with a whole list of uh, different things but you get the picture whatever you're doing let your heart's desire whether you're consciously praying or not be to say come holy spirit come and build your church let's pause now hit the pause button on the screen when the uh, questions come up Reflect upon those questions and then when you're ready, come back for one final prayer.
Let us pray. Lord God, as we have travelled through these stories from your word, imprint upon our minds all that you want to teach us, all that you want us to remember, and may the constant desire of our hearts, may our prayer be to say, Come, Holy Spirit, come to build your church. Amen.